Hello there, lovely folks at YouTube, Ren here. So today is the first day of September, and uh, that means it's time for another monthly tour. Uh, now I do want to give the caveat that um, I was away from home for a lot of August, so there's a lot of weeds uh, that I just haven't gotten around to because I just can't weed everything in the amount of time. But, you know, I'll show you what areas need to be cleared out, what areas don't. We'll talk about some of that stuff. Um, and we'll see what some of my garden is doing as we're starting to move closer to autumn. So let's uh, let's get started here. So I want to start here actually opposite my uh, hazel, which is theoretically making some hazelnuts, but honestly, I never find them because the squirrels always get to them before me. But if you look just opposite here, um, it's kind of flopped over a little bit. Usually it stands up closer to the, the house right here. Um, but this is a uh, Panicum virgatum, which is actually a native grass. This is called Virginia switchgrass. Uh, this particular cultivar is the Shenandoah cultivar. Um, and what I like about this is that not only is it a really nice native space filler with these nice little seed panicles that some birds will eat, um, but it does actually change color in the autumn. You can see that the grass is starting to get this nice sort of brassy purple red color to it so it's a really nice uh native filler grass that uh um i use to kind of cover up some of that unsightly stuff on the side of my house so i do have it right next to my cold frame which we'll take a peek in there i just watered some of the stuff in there yesterday look at that uh mandrakes have come out of their dormancy so we have one Two. That really big one is the one that has the four roots on it. Um, three. And then look, number four. That's actually a little baby seedling that sprouted not too long ago, and I moved it outside when all the other mandrakes came out of dormancy, because I figured if they like the weather, then this guy would too. So that's what my mandrakes are up to right now. I don't know how long they'll keep growing before the cold hits, but we'll see. Uh, this little bed over here, this is what I like to call my bird bed because it does have the bird bath. The bird bath is definitely hiding in there amongst all the growth. In particular, this guy right here. This is a uh, poke, pokeweed, pokeberry, and uh, they're green now, uh, mainly because all the ripe berries have been eaten. <laughs> but the uh, the ripe berries, you can see, they make the these nice little reddish purple stems, and the berries themselves are like a bluish black color. Oh, hang on. There's like one little ripe berry right there. Um, this is, this plant is mildly poisonous. Uh, may, mostly it will just make you puke if you eat the, the toxins in it. Um, but the, uh, the berries can be used to make an ink. It's not a super long lasting ink. It only, you know, lasts for a few years really. Um, but it is a nice little temporary ink and it has that nice sort of, you know, bright magenta color initially. It eventually will fade to brown as it starts to fade out, but kind of a cool thing. All right, this herb bed is, you know, the weeds are starting to reclaim it a little bit, but um, mo mainly what I wanted to point out while I was here is this guy right here, my moonflower, which has gotten just huge, huge, and it's gotten quite a number of little flower buds on it that are ready to bloom. So, one thing that I have discovered, which I did not realize before I grew Moonflower this year, you can see it a little bit better under here because there were some under here. Um, you see that leaf right there? Look at that. Apparently Moonflower is also a favorite food of the hornworms, the horn, same hornworms that will eat your tomatoes. Uh, the advantage I found is that they seem to like the Moonflower better than my tomatoes, so they've been almost exclusively targeting this plant. It's also been a lot easier for me to find the hornworms on this plant than it is on my tomatoes. So, um, yeah, there's there's a little bit of damage from the hornworms, but as of today, I'm not seeing any hornworms. I've literally just, all the ones I found, I've picked them off and I threw them out on my deck and the birds ate them. So, hooray for the cycle of nature. Speaking of tomatoes over here, of course, have some new baby tomatoes. Um, the tomatoes kind of took a hit while I was away because they weren't getting regularly watered. Um, but they, they did make some tomatoes during that time that I was gone um, because I know that there had been some green tomatoes on there when I left. And uh, I just told the, the person who I had cat sitting for me to just help yourself, help themselves to any tomatoes that 
happened to show up in the backyard while I was gone. So, so now the tomatoes have kind of gone through a reset after their brief period of drought while I was gone. Um, but they're putting out a lot of new growth and some new tomatoes. And luckily the season here in Virginia, like I'm probably not going to get my first frost until end of September, early October. So I should still get some of these tomatoes. Um, this bed has mostly been cleared out. There's a few sad looking Swiss chard in there, which probably should have been pulled, but I wanted to see what they would do. I actually planted some new Swiss chard in their place, the seeds, to see if they would uh, come back for the fall. And then, of course, I have my marjoram there. I do use a lot of marjoram in my cooking. Um, it's one of the main herbs that we use in the region of Italy where my family came from. And then, of course, my peppers have got, got some pretty nice peppers on them. This bed right here is almost all green beans, and you can see they're just like going gangbusters right now. I have to come out here and harvest because there's a lot of green beans on there that need to be picked. So we'll probably have green beans for dinner tonight. And then I cleared out this area here, but did I? Oh yeah, I did plant something here. That's right. I planted bok choy here. So it's a little bit shadier. It's a cooler area. The bok choy should do well, hopefully. This is the time of year that we're starting to plant our fall crops here in Virginia, because again, we have a pretty long fall growing season as well, where it's a little bit cooler, but not so cold that the plants won't like it. Um, you can see my cucumbers here. They did not do well with me being gone and not getting the water that they needed. And now they're starting to get, by, get hit by blight. So I did get a few cucumbers off of them at least, you know, enough to make a nice uh, batch of gazpacho. So, and then of course, as things are cooling down, my parsley looks a little bit happier. Uh, the scallions are just kind of going ridiculous right now. Um, these might be broom corn. I'm not entirely sure. I'm leaving them there to kind of figure out what they are, <laughs> but I did not plant those. I know that. Um, and then these are broccoli. They are looking very, very sad and very bug eaten right now because apparently I am out of diatomaceous earth. I did not realize that, but uh, yeah, I need to go buy some more diatomaceous earth. They might recover. They might not. We'll see what happens. This right here was my big project for yesterday was cleaning out this bed, which was just completely filled with weeds for the most part. Um, as I, you know, this was my asparagus bed. There's a little bit of asparagus in there. Unfortunately, my son got overzealous with the, uh, um, the tilling of this bed for, you know, I asked him to weed it in the spring one time when I was working and he tilled it and pulled out all of the asparagus crowns and put them in the compost. And of course it was like two days before I realized what had happened because I was working. So I tried replanting all the crowns, but I think most of them were gone by then because I only have a few asparagus plants that actually popped up. So probably, um, well, I'm going to go to uh, the big nursery near, near me to buy diatomaceous earth and I'll see if they have some asparagus crowns for the fall that I can put in. We'll see. So, but yeah, it's, it's kind of disappointing because, you know, asparagus takes like three to five years to really get a good yield. And this would have been year five for my bed. So I was really looking forward to like a plethora of asparagus and I got none. I got zero. So, but I can't, I'm not mad. I'm just, like I said, I'm disappointed, but he didn't know any better. So anyway, uh, this is a project that needs weeding right here that my strawberries are buried somewhere under all that grass. So but you can see my apple tree in particular, the branches that are weighed down because they really are too small to support apples, but this one looks really nice. This is my Arkansas black apple, um, which is doing really well. There's a little bit of fungal, you know, like sooty mold type stuff on the apples. And there's some apples that have definitely been bitten into because apparently the squirrels that used to usually eat my tomatoes have now decided to eat my apples. But, um, but yeah, it's doing well. The apples are just about ready for harvest. Um, I actually pulled off one of the ones that was kind of eaten on one side by the squirrel and cut off a piece from the good side and tasted it and it was doing well. So I uh, can't say the same for this apple right here. This is my um, Abelmarl Pippin and this one actually, I need to pull some of the stuff off of here because you can see like, can you see that? Yeah, that apple's bad. I'm just gonna pull that off rather than having the tree continue to waste its time on it. Throw that by the compost. But here's one thing that I see popping up occasionally and it cracks me up. Do you see that? That's an asparagus plant growing at the foot of my apple tree. Probably seeded by one of the birds. 
So I'm going to have to dig that up and put that over in the asparagus bed too. <laughs> so, going over to this side over here, you can see these are a couple of my volunteer mulein plants looking really well back there and behind the rose. Uh, the rose is, you know, putting out some new growth, but it's not going to bloom again. Hang on. This thing right here. See that? Come here, you. That is right there. You can see it. That's uh, milkweed, Asclepia syriaca. So I, I don't know if you've been following my Instagram, but I had a seed pod that I had uh, liberated from my next door neighbor's house when I was visiting my parents. And um, the seed pod opened up and I harvested some of the seed today. But of course, in the interest of natural balance and everything, um, there was a good portion of the seed that I actually released to the wind because that way we're kind of spreading those genes into this area. So let's uh, get that one to go. So, and it's just going to go in the grass. Well, it'll get blown up at some point. <laughs> but yes, that way we're having some Illinois um, milkweed genes and kind of inserted into the population here in Virginia. So yeah. This guy, I don't even know. I don't even know. Like, right as I had made the decision to replace this plant, um, I gave it a little bit of fertilizer and a last-ditch effort, and apparently that's all it needed, because now it has come back gangbusters. It's got a whole bunch of new healthy-looking growth and a whole bunch of new healthy-looking flowers on it. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe I will just get another Boulasia to plant on the other side. We'll see. Uh, Rue is doing well. There's... Some of these, are there seeds in there? No, I think there's a couple seeds in there, but I think I've lost most of the seeds in there. But there are some unopened pods still ripening here that I can still, and I did harvest some seeds earlier, so I'm not super concerned about that. Um, this little rose here is, it's doing okay. You know, you can see it put up a whole bunch of flowers while I was gone. I mean, and of course we cut off, there we are. So, um, just going around over here, you can see my, uh, my Ella campaign here is, uh, it's setting some seeds here. I have also, I've harvested a bunch of those seeds as well. So you can see this makes these nice fluffy seeds that like to kind of fly everywhere. And there's still some stalks that are blooming as well. So, uh, this thing seeds itself like crazy. I have literally filled up the entire bag full of seed from that. And there's still a buttload of seed left to be spread everywhere. Um, you can see my stuff in pots. They it kind of got hit hard while I was gone. Um, so like some of this right here, that's my um, hyssop got a little dried out. Um, but there's probably some seeds in there I can harvest. The sage also died back a lot um, because it just got dried out. The the lavender did okay though, and the rosemary did okay. So. A few flowers here. Um, I threw some seed in here in the springtime just to see what would happen and now some of it's blooming so we've got a single zinnia and a few cosmos just kind of blooming in there still. And then the roses are starting to come back. You can see them in the background. As the weather cools off more I'll get more roses off of those. <sighs> Here's another one that's blooming that you can see. That right there. That's my tansy. You can see why they call it buttons. One of the common names for that plant. So, this is another area that I've weeded, but again, needs to be weeded again. So I do have, this right here I left. This is a vervain, uh, verbena officinalis, that they're supposed to be over there, and you can see where there's another one over there. Um, but this one I left where it was. I'll probably harvest that soon. It is starting to set seed, so I'm going to collect some of that seed. And of course, it's next to my new yarrow plant which is just a little miniature yarrow. And then this one right here, it's hard to tell because there's a lot of weeds popping up in it. But you can see some of those flowers in there. That is actually Arnica. Um, it, it blooms earlier in the summer. I'll make a video on that sometime next year. It's on my list. Going back in here, you can see my valerian is looking very healthy right now. And it looks like, yep, I have a little volunteer comfrey there. I'm gonna have to dig that out before it gets too deeply rooted in there. So the comfrey is actually like, I don't know. It doesn't seem as happy as it's been in years past. I don't know whether that's a water issue or what. 
I did actually just run the sprinkler through here yesterday. So it's a little bit better. But let me see, this is where my still bay was. That one's starting to die back, and I've actually cut back some of it. Um, the hellebore, of course, is evergreen year round. It looks nice. I do have liriope behind it, which was literally, it was a filler plant that I inherited from, with the house. Um, I did not plant it, but it's fine. It fills that space, so I'm leaving it be. And then, of course, this corner here has a lot that needs to be cleaned out. Um, there's actually full-grown trees that are growing up in there that I need to dig out, but they're all, like, behind this flowering quince, which is rather pokey, so... It's, uh, it's on my list, but you can see it's bad. Like there's a crepe myrtle tree that's growing in there. That's actually starting to set flowers. That's how long it's been there. I'm like, Ooh, okay. And then of course these need to be cut back. This needs to be deadheaded. That's my, um, queen of the meadow. Oh, come on. Meadow sweet. That's the name of it. So, and then the pond doing its thing. I put the water clarifier in it yesterday, so it actually looks really nice today. There, the fish are still in there. Um, however, while I was on vacation, I had five fish before I left, and now I have four. And the one that I am missing is the one orange goldfish that I had. So I'm thinking that one of the numerous cats that like to come into my yard probably snagged it because it was very visible. Um, the other four fish are all sort of a dark grayish black color so they really blend into the background of the, the black liner really well and it's really hard to spot them so in fact what you can't even see right now but I can see is there's actually a fish right in there that, again you can't even see it because of the way that the camera is picking up the light but I can see it hanging out in there so like I said I did lose a fish they like to kind of hang out under this um, lily pad here because obviously that's a, that's a safe sheltered place for them. They like to they like to feel safe, just like most of us do, you know. But anyway, one last thing, of course, this is the time of year when my Hosta plantaginea blooms. I always love the Hosta plantaginea. It's one of the ones I got from my mom. It's a very old cultivar of Hosta, as you can tell by the name. <laughs> Um, and these, these flowers, it blooms. This is a weird time of year for hostas to bloom. Most hostas bloom, uh, here. They usually bloom in, you know, June, late June going into July. This one blooms in August. Uh, and the flowers are very fragrant. They have this lovely sort of lily-like scent to them. That's really nice. Uh, fun fact, hosta and asparagus are actually in the same family. They're both edible. Um, but hosta is just very fibrous, which is why it's edible, but it's not exactly palatable. But... If you were really desperate and starving, you could always eat a hosta. You'd be safe doing that. So I don't necessarily recommend the flavor of it, <laughs> but at least it wouldn't kill you. So starvation food, right? Anyway, I think I'm going to cut this off here. Of course, last little look at the pond and my lady there. So anyway, I hope this video finds you well and I will see you again soon.